Hello, and welcome to the session on critical race theory presented by Floyd Craig, Jill Hanley, Michelle Johnson, Dewan Williams, Erica Woolridge, and Heidi Zimmerman. Critical race theory is the theoretical framework that examines the application of critical theory, including society and culture, race, law, and power, challenging the norms of racism. Critical race theory maintains that society is divided along racial lines. A little background. Critical race theory originated from the critical legal studies in the mid to late 80s. Critical legal studies was critical in that the legal system just moved entirely too slow to bring about real social cha social change. Um, the difference setting critical race theory apart was the focus on race. Uh, there are five key concepts to critical race theory. Racism is normal and not apparent to American society. Um, two, employs counter storytelling. Three, insist on a critique of liberalism. Four, Interest convergence, five, whiteness is property. We'll discuss those more later in the presentation. Notable figures, Derek Bell and Alan Freeman laid the foundation. Um, Bell was critical of the civil rights litigation and the role of white self-interest. Meanwhile, Alan Freeman was critical of the role of the US Supreme Court in guiding the course of civil rights project progress. Richard Delgado co-authored Critical Race Theory in Introduction, but is noted as the founder of the Critical Race through School of Legal Scholarship. Patricia Williams brings in the voice of the individual through the use of personal narrative and autobiographical accounts. She is noted for developing a broader connection between critical race theory and feminist theory. Kimberly Crenshaw is responsible for the intersection, intersectionality of identity, where people are made up of two or more identities, where one can be both black and a woman, and how those two aspects meet to give them unique experience. Um, and later, uh, Gloria Lassen Billings and William Tate are credited with moving critical race theory beyond legal studies into education. My research topic is the recruitment of underrepresented minority professionals in the teacher profession through the creation of pipelines for access. The possible questions that I have, why are URM students choosing other professions over teaching? How do we engage URM students to create a pipeline to teach preparation programs? How might we shift the landscape of education to better reflect the student population? I'll be using critical race theory to expose systems and structures that negatively impact the diversity of education and propose radical solutions for addressing those, as stated by Latson, Gloria Latson Billings. Hi, my name is Michelle Johnson, um, and I work as a school counselor at uh, Hebrew Middle School in Bullitt County. Um, so just basically continuing with what um, Floyd had said in our introduction, uh, critical race theory does have five basic tenets. And one of the first tenets is central intersectionality. Um, this term was uh, developed and created by Kimberly Crenshaw. And so what she was looking at was how race, gender, class, and some other individual characteristics basically intersect with one another um, and how they also over, overlap, um, which would create uh, multiple levels of social injustices. So recently I watched a TED talk of hers um, and it was um, on the urgency of intersectionality. Um, for her, she said the best way that she could explain intersectionality was to be able to um, provide uh, an analogy. So her analogy was based off um, a road, um, basically an intersecting road, and in the, in the mindset of how traffic kind of flows. Um, so I was scrambling, trying to figure out how could I explain this the best way possible. So, hold on, let's 
So our issue that we have is, um, let's say, for instance, we have a black male who is denied interest into a prestigious university. Um, and so he was trying to, let's say this student is trying to fight against this and say, you know, I feel like I was denied uh, because I'm a black male. Um, <clears throat> for that, his road um, to intersect would be the way that the school um, was, was structured by gender and by race. So on one end of the road, we'll have gender, and on another end of the road, we'll have race. In the middle would be this young man, um, because he has two different issues um, that we can say um, not necessarily works against him, but two issues that he feels like needs to be addressed. So his traffic would be the accepting policies. Overall, if any, if a review board or anyone was looking over this, they would have to take the time to examine what are the accepting policies of this university and what are some other practices that the universities um, use in order to determine acceptance or denial um, into their university. So once again, the traffic would be the acceptance policies and other practices of the university that ran through the road. Let's say that this young man is standing in the middle of this road and all that traffic is coming and and now he needs help. So an ambulance decides to come along the way. Um, basically, but the ambulance can't help him until he decides what issue he wants to address. Does he want to address the issue of gender or does he want to address the issue of race? Because just be mindful, just like when you go to the hospital, um, you have to be able to identify what is wrong with you before um, the hospital can even treat you. So that's basically how inter intersectionality works. Um, you have all these multiple things that will interact and intersect with one another um, or overlap with one another. Um, and so because of that, it just creates those multiple levels of social injustices. So my research topic um, that I would like to um, look into is educational diversity. Why aren't there more people like me in a suburban school district? Um, for me, I wanted to look more at first at the teacher perspective or the hiring process, but instead I decided to focus more on the student lens. Um, I want to know what students, minority students, what experiences they have, what is it that they're going through um, being in a suburban school district. And so how I'm relating it to critical race theory is I definitely want to look at student trauma, if there is any trauma. So part of that would be um, using the adverse childhood experience um, questionnaire to determine if that student has experienced any type of trauma or anything significant in their life. For that fact, I even want to take a deeper look to say, um, if you are in a suburban school district, is there any experiences that you have had, have, have they added or impacted um, any type of trauma um, in your life? I also want to look at the overall curriculum. Um, is there anything in the curriculum that a, a minority student would deem um, offensive? Um, or is there something that they would like to see more, uh, something more incorporated into the curriculum? Also looking at implicit and bias, or I'm sorry, implicit biases. Um, so, you know, are teachers kind of putting off or pushing off their thoughts and opinions of um, for minority students without without the the knowledge that they're even doing it? Is it intentional or is it unintentional? Um, and also looking at the climate of the school, do do you do your minority students feel um, welcome? Do they feel like their thoughts and opinions matter as if they are actually a part of the school climate? Um, so those are some of the things that I will want to look at in my topic uh, to determine um, how edu educational diversity really impacts students. Hi, I'm Jill Handley, and I'll be presenting tenet number two of Critical Race Theory, Challenge to Dominant Ideology. According to Marxist philosophy, dominant ideology refers to the attitudes, beliefs, values, and morals shared by the majority of the people in a given society. The dominant ideology is often used as a mechanism of social control and frames how the majority of the population thinks about the nature of society, their place in society, and their connection to a social class. According to Marx, dominant ideology was created by those in power to control the working class. 
When people feel that they have no control or voice, they often accept the status quo, which then creates a cycle of those in power and control stay in power and control. In America, the dominant ideology that frames social, political, and educational structures systematically advantages whites, while at the same time creates disadvantages for people of color. This, in essence, is racism, as defined by critical race theory. Because racism has been and continues to be considered a normal condition in U.S. society, dominant ideology must be challenged to dismantle systematic inequalities that exist in our country. My research topic is on parent connectedness and a sense of belonging. I'm looking to see how it impacts the achievement and motivation for learning of African American students. Possible questions for my research will be to what extent to what extent does parent connectedness and sense of belonging impact the achievement and motivation of African American students? When I think about this topic through a CRT lens, some questions that come to mind that will be possible questions for my research will be, what systems and structures exist to make African American parents feel they have an active voice? Conversely to that, what systems and structures exist that oppress the voice of our African American parents? Since the goal of CRT is to dismantle systematic inequities by calling attention to them, the goal of my research is to examine the systems and structures that are in place at my school that may be oppressing or marginalizing the voice and sense of belonging for our African-American parents. Two years ago, when our school analyzed our school comprehensive survey data, we noticed that we did not have any data for our African-American parents. Now, 28% of our overall student population is African-American, yet we didn't even have five parent surveys, which is the minimum number required, complete the survey that year. That really got me thinking, for almost a third of our population, there is no active voice. There is no representation. Therefore, the goal of my research will be to interview African American parents to maintain their perspective of the systems and structures that we have in place and determine if they are inhibiting a sense of belonging and if that is having a negative impact on our student achievement and motivation of our African-American students. Schools are often built upon the structures of dominant ideology and that advantages whites. Therefore, my goal is to conduct act and re action research that will involve our African-American parents as primary stakeholders to identify and provide actionable steps for creating more equitable systems and structures to increase their sense of belonging and ultimately positively impact the motivation and student achievement of our African-American students. So the third basic tenet of critical race theory that we'll be looking at is a commitment to social justice. And part of the big um, focus around the commitment to social justice is a focus on empowering those disenfranchised groups and so here, what we would really be looking at is giving a voice to those whose voices are often not heard, um, as well as having an ethical mandate to serve any community interest. Uh, and then the last one would be a correlation of power sharing and who would be involved in the research process. And so some of the questions that you can ask yourself when trying to incorporate that focus of a commitment to social justice um, what, what, what is the moral or ethical imperative for being for basing a project around this problem, as well as what area of inequality is being addressed? So looking at areas of inequality within that community and um, whose voices, perspectives and needs are shaping this project. What is the cultural, social and political value of further researching this problem? And what will be the potential outcomes and real world applications and who will these benefit? Um, so all of those questions when you're asking yourself will still have that commitment to social justice. And then it directly correlates to power sharing, who, um, who and what believe in regards to should be involved in the research process, as well as looking at valuable topics of study and the use of social research, research in real life applications. 
And then moving on to my research uh, problem, what I'm kind of uh, looking at is implicit bias within our educational system and um, how that contributes to an over-identification of African-American male students identified as having an emotional behavior disability. Um, and so part of CRT uh, is looking at cultural competence. And so when conducting research, ensuring that any practices that are utilized um, will, it's imperative, imperative to be mindful of the population you're working with. And so making sure that practices, anything you put into place, um, that strategies that, you, that are utilized will be most effective. Um, and so what I'll be doing is looking at any fiscal implications. So um, how are resources managed? And so really looking at comprehensive improvement schools. Um, so CSI schools versus non-CSI schools and um, how are resources implemented in those non-CSI schools versus CSI schools, as well as teacher training. So do those schools that have a higher special education population, um, are they getting more training, including those regular education teachers versus those non-CSI um, schools that maybe have a lower special education population? And then finally, looking at a cultural aspect of it, um, as well as cultural sensitivity, textbooks that are being utilized, and um, any implicit bias. Um, so, and then a lack of diversity within the staff. Hello, my name is Dewan Williams, and I'm a student at the University of Louisville in the EDD program, class of 2023. Today, I'm presenting on the fourth tenet of the critical race theory, which is around experimental knowledge and counter storytelling. The experimental knowledge and counter storytelling Historically, through the lens of CRT, uh, the Eurocentric perspectives hold limited and vastly different views on what counts as knowledge, culture, customs, language, and community. So these experiences, cultures, languages of students of color have been devalued with actions and policies of many school leaders and systems. This lack of understanding and unwillingness to increase the knowledge base creates a deficit thinking mindset of students of color or people of color in general. The critical race methodology provides a tool to counter deficit storytelling through grounded research in the experiences and knowledge of students of color. As counter stories are told and diverse experiences by school leaders are deepened, it will challenge racism, sexism, classism to work towards social and racial justice. So what if? What if we create a system that screens for equity to ensure that candidates applying for school leadership positions are not someone's favorite, but rather the most favorable and equitable for students? we have an opportunity to screen for equity, which brings it to my research topic. What if a school district improve social and racial justice in, in their schools by the implementation of a racial equity leadership screener? So what would it look like? So what I'm thinking is more of a four dispositions, four dispositions which embody an equitable leader. And these four dispositions should be demonstrated by candidates prior to applying for positions. So one, they should be able to identify and address actions that they're using school data to confront and improve outcomes for students of color in their current role. The practice and decision-making and responsiveness to cultural competence. Three, they're demonstrating leadership that disrupts inequities in schools. And four, they're reflecting on personal growth as an equitable educator or leader. Again, there's multiple ways to accomplish these four dispositions, but the goal is to make sure that they're equitable leaders before even getting to the, to the leadership positions. But what is the connection to the CRT portion of 
uh, of the experimental knowledge and kind of story storytelling, excuse me. Connections to the research are school leaders will demonstrate their competencies in racial equity. Through demonstrated experiences, leaders are able to glean from the talents, experiences, and culture of the students of color. These experiences will deepen their capacity to lead, making them more equitable leaders, thus having a more positive impact on students of color. So all students are enriched by equitable and supportive school communities. It's important that our voices are heard, but also that we, uh, that we take in all uh, experiences within our community. Thank you. And next will be Erica with our fifth tenant. Hello, my name is Erica Woolridge. I'm a school counselor here in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm currently at Indian Trail Elementary Micro Society Magnet School and a current student at the University of Louisville in the Educational Leadership Doctoral Program with an anticipated graduation date of fall 2023. You have heard the other basic tenets of critical race theory, and now I am bringing interdisciplinary perspective, which is the fifth tenet. An interdisciplinary perspective gives us information that involves at least two areas of learning. We apply education and training pedagogies to describe methods and insights of several established disciplines or traditional fields of study, all in the pursuit of a common task, equality. In that regard, critical race is and can be viewed from various points of view. Researchers are constantly looking for areas to improve. You can study education from a historical point of view using race, as well as the current state of education for people of color. Using this example, researchers may look for something that links multiple distinct education fields to study together. If you dig deep into critical race theory, you will notice that there are so many different points of view on the topic. Some do not feel that it is productive and others feel that it only makes white people look and feel bad. In the words of Dr. Keith Stanley Brooks, the Dean of Academic Foundations at the Minneapolis Community and Technical College, if reading about it makes you feel uncomfortable, imagine how it feels to be on the receiving end of those feelings. This type of thought guides all researchers of critical race theory. We must allow the people being affected the most by their race to have a voice in how it is affecting you throughout all aspects of your life. In JCPS, this is already happening with the creation of the Department of Racial Equity and tools created to help all teachers look at their lessons, programs, and books to ensure that a more global lens is used when planning and implementing engaging instruction for all teachers. So there is a focus thinking on race um, and not just um, people of one color, but people of all colors. Um, there is a um, purposed uncovering of oppressive educational experiences and then just equality through the eyes of people of color. I personally plan to research self-reflections, the impact of special education on African-American males in middle school, grades six through eight. I believe that critical race theory will be beneficial in my endeavors as I believe race has an enormous impact on the way that our African-American boys are treated and as a result can affect the way that they feel about themselves as students and then on to larger society. I'd like to focus on when they believe that these feelings were imprinted on them and by who. So how do they feel about themselves? When did these feelings begin to present? Who can you connect those feelings with in your past? And how to move forward with better self-esteem about yourself. I believe critical race theory will play an integral role in my personal research topic. Questions for the audience as we move forward. Do you think that post-racialism is achievable during your lifetime? Why or why not? And then how might you use critical race theory in action research? Here are the sources that me and my teammates um, put together um, as we were doing the research on this topic. And we hope you enjoyed our presentation and we look forward to your questions.